G'day race fans and welcome to Super T Porto. We're down here at Bathurst and today is a very special day. We're going to be revealing the livery for our 2022 wildcard entry, which is going to be driven by none other than Craig Lowndes and Declan Fraser. Finally, dude, we've threatened to do this for so long to come to Bathurst and do a live show. It's been, what, nearly three seasons that we've been doing Enforcer and the Dude. Finally, we're doing a live show at the mountain. Yeah. About time. <laughs> About time. Uh, oh, that's cool. Very hey, cool, Russ. That's what I said, to, I said it before in our, uh, in our brief. It's the only free thing these guys are going to get all weekend. <laughs> but we wanted to do this for the fans, didn't we? Yeah, we, we have the best fans. I've been in and out of the, the bar there a few times today and met a few of you out there and I said, oh, geez, we've got some knowledgeable fans, you know, they know a, a fair bit about our sport. So uh, thanks for coming. Thanks for being here and uh, seeing a few faces here that have been here all day queuing up. So <laughs> good on you. <laughs> that could be good or that could be bad <laughs> like at the end of the day because there was, uh, there was plenty of beers going out next door. Look, a big thanks to, to the Oxford Hotel who, I mean, great yep. facility, good on you guys. They, they have been so good to work with. Uh, the Super Cheap Auto team, of course, they've been working for days putting all this all together, so that's awesome. But the Oxford have been great, and uh, I mean, it's the key. I mean, geez, we've had some big nights here over the years too, just quietly. When we had that big Holden budget, remember the parties that used to go on? And yeah, I know. And all the carpets got that VHT <laughs> sort of feel, you know, you're sticking to it. It's just gold. Uh, but this is what Bathurst is about. You know, it's about having a good time, watching the best motor race. I was going to say in the country, it's one of the best motor races in the world. Definitely. You know, by a long shot. You've got to agree with that. I mean, it is super good. So, um, 
I think what really grabs you about Bathurst is the history. For sure. That's what it's about. I mean, it's, it's made champions. I mean, look how many legends have come out of this mountain. You know, when you go back to the 1960s, like, have a look at it. I mean, it used to be a dirt track, you know, no guardrails, cars tipping out on their roofs, you know, Falcons and Cortinas and Tiranas and oh, every sort of make and model under the world. And it's just out of control. It's a, it's a sort of place that's got to break you to make it, right? It's a, that's a good way to put it. It is, apart from Nick Perkat, who turned up and won at his first go, but I think yeah, how many's been trying since, you know? So yeah, yeah. Um, it's got to break you to make you, but the history of the place, and, and because it was on free to air TV, we all got to watch it. And <laughs> Very true. It's, you know, without Bathurst, none of this other sport makes any sense to me. Yeah, and would that be a fair comment that, that the most of the motorsport legends in this country have come out of this race, bar anything else, bar championships, or because when you look back at it, you know, you can almost remember who won Bathurst and going right back to the 60s. Yeah, because everyone watched it. And, but you should know that. You worked for Larry Perkins. You drove for him. It was, it was only one thing that was important to him, wasn't it? That's it. The championship, that's it. The championship was a test session <laughs> for Bathurst, yep. basically. You know, yep. and, that's, and that's the way you approached it. You know, and that's why he was so successful at the mountain as well. Um, but I think it's just, when, when you look at, you know, you look at videos like this and everything from, you have professional teams and then privateers who used to roll up on a trailer, you know, push the car off the back of an open trailer, had a few stacks of wheels, you know, a couple of 44s of fuel, off they go racing. Pretty good. Oh, it was, but um, you know, the closest thing with that now is, is the wild cards, which you know, get to have a run. But yeah, I, think I miss a bit of that, you know, with, that anyone could come and have a crack at this race. It was something that made it. So I'd like to see that be a bit more. Yeah, more people will be able to have a go at it. Don't want it to be so elitist. I think you're dead right. And, and, that, and it also threw a lot of factors into it too, because you had some cars here. I mean, you used to have two litre cars in there. You know, so there, there was a lot of factors and, and, you know, people running into each other and all the rest of it. But I, but I think it was a race for everyone. It was a race for professional run teams with big budgets yep. and the trailer races. It just covered the broad spectrum. So you're right, we do, we do miss that down the road. We're, either we're getting old or we miss it a bit, but um, you know, you've got the six hour Everyone now, the 12 older, hour. Mate. There's plenty of other racing here now on the mountain which fills that gap. Yeah. And when you look at the history, you look at the history of the fans. I mean, there'd be a lot of people here that have grown up around that era of racing that the video we just saw. And, yeah. you know, and it's, that's what it's about. It's about, well, the, right. it's about new, yes, there is new fans, but I think the tradition side of it, you get a lot of hardcore fans that follow Bathurst. You do, and a lot of, when you meet a lot of people, like people here, they, you know, oh, this is my 26th year, or, you know, I've been coming for a long time. So it's, it is tradition, and, you know, they bring their family along and introduce their kids to it. So, as I said again, without Bathurst, the, the rest of the sport really does fall down. It's, it's what holds it all together. It is. Well, we've got a great selection of people that are coming on the show tonight um, and uh, we try to look like our show when we first produced Enforcer and the Dude it was about getting people that have got something to say and a lot of people say oh you have these guests like I think Roland Dane's name and comes up quite a bit why do you have him on the time because he's got something to say you know so and that's what we want we want people that have got personalities not afraid to say what they think whether you agree with it or whether you disagree with it, because that's what sport's about. It's about disagreement as well. Uh, and that's what makes a sport entertaining. So we've got a great lineup for you that will be coming on the show. And uh, I reckon we ought to get the first one on because speaking to guys that used to speak his mind all the time, I reckon he's top of the list. Oh, I gave him a run for his money there at one stage. <laughs> <laughs> you got you got more drive throughs Yeah, you got, you got more drive-throughs. I got more drive throughs Yeah, yeah, great. Greg Murphy, everyone. Yeah. 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 <laughs> the Murph. The Murph. The fifty one's back. Hello. He's back. Hello. Look at this. This is great, isn't it? It's good, isn't it? Yeah. Well, this is this is what it's all this about. This is our people, Russ. This is our people. <laughs> We're the man of the They're people. The believers. Yeah. Murph. What I thought what I was the, I yeah. thought I was crazy last year doing a wild card, right? 
I couldn't believe it. <laughs> yeah. I couldn't believe it. it. Must be a lot of money involved for you to be doing it. I, <laughs> I can't. Super Chief's budget was gone after you, bloody. <laughs> I can be bought, no doubt. I know about you that. can be bought. I can be bought. Yeah, yeah. But, um, bit of self belief too. Bit of self belief. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So much we want to talk about because there's so much to it. Because you know, like I was about the saddle for a while. How's it going? Like, I mean. Well, we were, we, I mean, I was genuinely looking forward to when we announced it last year that, you know, we were going to be basically teamed yeah, up together yeah. and, we, you know, it was, uh, that was going to be a lot of fun. Um, and, uh, you know, I was watching and we were talking about, you know, just how tough it was to actually get back in the car and adapt and change it. I found exactly the same thing, you know, for once you weren't bullshitting me. So um, <laughs> it, was, it, it, was, it was a challenge. Like, it, uh, you know, we sort of switch off from using that um, those natural instincts that we've been doing, you know, when you're driving the cars you know, frequently and often, you know, it just, it's quite subliminal, it's quite natural, right? And then when you stop and you've got other things going on, all that stuff gets parked, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't come to the forefront that often. And, and I've I definitely found that. And everyone that's uh, spoken about these cars, uh, all the guys I've spoken to about it, and you, were, you confirmed exactly the same stuff, was that, you know, how, how they've evolved and changed and how you have to drive them now and, and how much corner speed you enter and how much brake pressure you carry and all that stuff, which is, you know, from 2014 when I last raced, if I carried this much brake pressure into a corner and tried to carry it in there, you would have smoked the inside front, you'd be in the gravel trap. And it's, it's adapting to that and how well the, the back of the car follows as well. And I've really enjoyed driving it, but you've still got a, that muscle memory is still very dominant, right? It comes back to the fore, and so you, you, you're fighting against what you actually need to be doing. The instincts are taking over. So, but it's it's been bloody good, and um, I've I've enjoyed the, the three test days we've done, and got better and better and more uh, more sort of in tune with it. And um, you know, I'm, I'm actually genuinely really looking forward to it now. The testing at Winton, obviously, a bit different than coming here. Yeah. Um, what are you easier here? I reckon for you yeah, it funny. would be. Yeah. I know the way we haven't, even, I haven't even spoken to you about this, but yeah. yeah. So I think it was the second test, um, uh, talking to Barry uh, and our engineers about it at, at the test, and I went, the technical side of Winton, you know, trying to actually, and, and it's everything's short and sharp, and, and you've got to be so precise with, with everything you do yep. there to, to generate a lap time, and there's a lot of corners that you've got to do those things on. And, and I said to, the, um, said to the guys, I said, you know what, I... I'm not worried about my speed here because I actually feel that the way you've got to drive that car is going to work better for me at Bathurst. Um, the flow. The flow, yeah, yeah absolutely. And, and just the way you actually carry, carry the speed in the corners, which I think is going to be a little bit more natural uh, to, to how I drive and, and, and actually how you need to drive this car is going to work a little bit better for me here. So, yeah, yeah. You're, not, you're not just a pretty face, are you? <laughs> not, even, not even that anymore, mate. No, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> Lucky that, well, lucky and unlucky that about last last year and you couldn't get over here yeah. for testing and the whole COVID thing and all the rest of it, but you needed those, that's what yeah. I found. And, and I thought when the pin got pulled last yeah. year, I thought that's smart because there's no way you could fire straight into Bathurst as you probably found out without doing those three test days and getting your head around it. We, we'd, we'd switched off from it. Richie and I really switched off and um, uh, it was Pete's fault. Um, he just kept pushing and pushing and pushing and, and, um, and you know, we were, uh, I think there was all sorts of supposed comms going on with, with people in power to, uh, to get us, you know, the opportunity to be able to fly, fly, to, uh, fly to Australia and then get back to New Zealand and I had no intention of sitting through two weeks of MIQ or whatever it was at the time, it was just, it was just, it's just not happening and, and we would have been in a, in a whole power of trouble trying to drive that car out the box without testing. So glad it was it was canned. Um, and now we're back in a, a full blown Bathurst as well. Last year again was the compromised version. You know, there's thousands of Kiwis that are coming over for this weekend all because of wow. Yeah, Kiwis. <laughs> um, you know, who want to be at this race. And and yeah. and you know that was all gonna that was all gonna taint it last year. So you know we're we're stoked, Richie's stoked and, and we've had three days Prep is as good as what it been. Got an extra sort of 12 months to actually go to the gym and, and work on that side of it as well. So I think we, we both feel really, really prepped for this. Yeah. And Richie? Car. Car's good. Car's good. <laughs> Car's really good. Car's really good. And Richie's really good. Richie's... Um, He's going all right. Richie's going all right. He, I mean, he jumped in that car at the first test and, and 
Uh, it was it was just like a a, a, a well fitted glove. He just got back in and whammo. Um, Baz will confirm that. You know the speed that he he just got back down to straight away was was super impressive. Um, yeah, I mean he's he's just class. He's all class, and, and it was like he'd never been out of it. He's he's in an amazing space mentally. Um, you know, it was the best thing that happened to him was that he, he walked away from the game for a couple of years, you know, just to clear everything. And um, it's, a t it's a tough sport. We know how tough it is mentally. And, and it's really challenging. And there's lots of things that people don't understand about it. He got judged with a very small amount of information that was offered to people. Okay. And he got judged for it very unfairly as well. And he went through two seasons in supercars where he wasn't given and, and, and supported the way that he, he needed to be as a prof professional driver supported. And, and, and that contributed to you know, him going, stuff this, I'm out of here, I, can't, I don't want to deal with this anymore. And, and it was the best thing that happened. He's come back better, stronger than he's ever been, um, physically and mentally. He was a, I mean, his results in Europe was pretty impressive well, when he raced there. He, he, Anything he drove. Yeah. Here in the wet, it's probably the mountain in the wet. Yeah, it's probably yeah. one of the best drives I've ever seen. Yeah. So he knows how to drive. And uh, I think he just suits the uh, Pete Adderton style of athlete management a bit better than what he was getting. <laughs> oh, the Pete Adderton uh, style of management, driver management, is, is unique. And, and some of us need that. Need that. Yeah, some of us need it. Especially the bribery part and the, and the, and the guilting part. Did, yeah. he, did he remind you about, Pete remind you about the Carina and the, how that started? And did he? Did, did he, he remind me? Shit, did he? I mean, that's, that was like, it was first up, it was like, you need to do this, you know, Richie, Richie, Richie. And I was like, mate, nah, I don't reckon Richie's going to be up for it. Nah, nah. And he goes, you remember 1994 when I put you in that car and blah, 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 blah. I'm like, <laughs> I mean, how, how, how are you going to how you going to go nut after that? Because he, he brought it up. I thought he'd forgotten, but I, I mean, he hadn't. He hadn't forgotten any of it. So. Yeah, huge influence on your career. Massive probably, influence. Yeah. I mean, he, um, you know, uh, without without Pete turning up there in '94, you, I mean, Super Touring was brand spanking new. Sydney Motorsport Park, yeah. Eastern Creek, and April '94. I'll never forget it. Well, you were quick too. You were that quick you had to run on full tanks, to, so Brad Jones didn't. <laughs> Well, not 94, but, um, but 95 I did. Um, so, you know, he walks into the garage after on Sunday afternoon after the inaugural Super Touring race, yeah. and we were flo you guys were flogging around pretending like you were racing, and, uh, and, and he goes, hey, uh, who are you and where are you from? And I went, oh, I'm, and my name's Greg and I'm from New Zealand. He goes, right, do you want to drive us Toyota Carina in three weeks' time? And I went, yeah. Is this how it works? <laughs> you, just, you turn up and win a win a bloody you know second rate Formula Holden race, and next minute you get a get a drive, you know paid for, and that's that's how it began. So I mean, when when he reminds you of that, it's pretty hard to, to say no. Good, good yeah. thing. Well, it's good that he carried on with it too, with continuing on and not just. I mean, could have just walked after bunning it last we, year. We were too far got, down the track. Yeah. You know, we we well, good in continue. A lot, yeah. well, a lot would have walked, and he and he pressed yeah, on yeah, with it. Yeah. You know, oh, so. he was committed, and, and it was you know for him. This is about the fans. I mean, it is. You know, um, unfortunately, your announcement bloody outmarketed him, and that gave him the shits big time. <laughs> and and so it was like, well, I'm coming coming back. So he was never going to let it die, and it, which is awesome because I'm I'm really glad we we have resurrected it. Nice. And um, um, you know, the 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 build this year, as I say, has been been what we needed. Yep. And uh, and now we're here. I'm I'm you know I'm. I'm, I'm actually now starting to get excited about the car, driving the car tomorrow, regardless of the weather. Yeah. Pretty cool. Well, and you're saying about Richie in the wet, and you're, you're no slouching yourself in the wet. I tell you what, if you had a couple of bucks, I'd be... I'd be have, you got, have you got a couple of bucks? Oh, you know what I'm like with money, <laughs> Murph. <laughs> he, he flew down private. I'm pretty tight. <laughs> yeah. 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 I'm pretty tight. But yeah. I, I, I'm actually going to throw some money down. Oh, yeah. right. How's that? Goodness, all right. And if I lose, you have to pay it back. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Nice. I'll get an invoice from Russell Ingle Industries. That's right. Hey, yeah. look, you've had a lot of history, and you're going to hate me for doing this. You're going to hate me for doing oh. this, Murph, because you... Because it's had almost two million views. Oh, you're not going to play it. I'm going to play it. I'm going to play it. I'm going to play it. Come what? on, you know what? what it is. Which one? Me taking out Marcus Ambrose? Is that, what, is that no, what that's the second one. Oh, that's the second one. <laughs> yeah. oh, no. oh, come on. <laughs> the, lap, the lap of the gods. Come on, mate. Come on. Because let, let's put this in perspective. And the time... And, the, and, and I'm going to pump up your tyre something fierce here. Because... Yeah. The time was pretty impressive for that era. Like, seriously. I mean, doing a six around there, holy hell. Um, it was a cool moment, but I, 
You know what I think the coolest moment was? Was the pit lane reaction afterwards. But the, the lap was impressive, but to get every everyone in pit lane... Were you out, out there, there clapping? I was out there, mate. Oh. Well, I had to drag my jaw off the ground first, but, you know. But no, it, it was, that was very cool. That, that, that was very cool. No, if that, this wouldn't have stood the test of time if it hadn't been for that. Yeah. If, 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 that yeah. if that hadn't had that reaction, we, we wouldn't be going on about it. Um, and I'm very yeah. humbled. I'm incredibly humbled. But, yeah. but for me, that doing the driving part, awesome. But, mate, I, I, honestly, it's, it was the reaction and the crowd and it was, it was Ford fans and it was everybody. It was the pit lane. You know, you know how hard it is yeah. to get a compliment out of anyone in our pit lane because yeah, we, yeah. we hate giving compliments to other, other teams and drivers, right? We, we, we sneakily, want, you know, like, now nah, that was pretty good. But you don't want to say it out loud. And, and so there's no question that um, without, without the reaction from the pit lane and, and a lot of other people, then it, it would not be for me anything like what it has been. So I, and, and it's very humbling. It's still humbling. Yeah. It really is. Pretty yeah. special, isn't it, though, dude? Look, it's pretty special. Oh, mate, it was a mind-blowing thing when it, it happened. And, um, that's, that's why it's cool to have you back here, mate. But, so. then, but, it's my, but you know, I, I'm big on the moments in the history. I mean, there's been many moments since then that I've thought were amazing. All that stuff, you know, the shootout stuff is, for me, and, and it, getting in the shootout is just such an incredible piece of, of the, the puzzle for Bathurst, right? And, and, I, and I, love, I love watching blokes hang it on the wall, put every single, you know, millimetre perfect bloody run across the top of the mountain, you know, scraping mirrors, all that kind of stuff in the shootout to see what kind of lap yeah. they can put together. For me, that's like, such a big part of it, and I, I feel honoured to have played a part. Well, this, this is cool. This, um, the Scotty McLaughlin lap. Yep, that's it. Yeah. You know, I mean... Cam Waters. Cam, three, Cam Waters. Uh, a couple I, of years I, ago. I really like it when it's, the, it's one of the biggest races that you will contest in yeah. and that you're prepared... To hang it, to hang it, <laughs> hang it, and have a big go in well, qualifying like, when it doesn't really meet too much. But to, well, it but does. When, when, it actually it, does. It, it does. But yeah. but but the consequence if you get it wrong, thrown yeah. in the fence, and, and potentially getting out. But I, I just applaud drivers that go. You know what? This this thing feels hooked up. Let's well, have a run. That, the thing that draws me mad the most is like everyone that doesn't make the top ten. Oh, it's a long race on Sunday. <laughs> you know, oh, I've got a, I've got an extra set of tyres. It's like, what a tosser. <laughs> oh, like, yeah. That's bullshit. Well said. You want to be in the shootout well and you said. want to be on well pole said. because, man, you're on the papers. You're in the papers on Sunday morning and your well team said. and your sponsors, everyone gets massive benefit yeah. from yeah, yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally agree. Totally agree. Yeah. But you've also had some controversy yeah. on the mountain too. You've had plenty of controversy, but, you know, Murph. Which one? That one was pretty good. Yeah, oh, it was. You know, so have it, yeah. Hey, you the know, controversy is you're, important. You know yeah, you're, you're mate. It is. You don't good. have it anymore. No. We no, don't but have it anymore. That's what I liked about it. And, and that's what I think the sport, and we'll get into that later down the road with our next two guests, but to bring it up, what the sport, I think, lacks now. Yeah. Because yeah. That, you, can't, you can't fabricate rivalries. No. When you, you don't like someone, you don't like someone. That's, yeah. And that's what we miss now. And, and the sort of, um, you know, when we had that, you had that little bit of altercation with uh, Mr. Ambrose. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, that was, that was true stuff. Oh, jeez, oh, there geez, it is now. <laughs> How did that get in the role? Oh, I don't know, but Jesus, that was... Uh, that was big. Now, now, tell me one thing. Yes, I probably could have driven the car Yes, away. I know. <laughs> I know. No one would tell us. <laughs> well, I, to, be, to be honest, I, don't, I actually don't know. Steve Henderson, Steve Henderson probably, maybe Keys, Keys Wheel probably knows. He, he said he yeah. could. He probably could have. Yeah, yeah. I think it was broken. The radiator probably, was still in it, obviously. Yeah, the radiator <laughs> was still in it. Yeah, the radiator <laughs> was still fine. Well, that held the front of the car together. Yeah. Um, I, I'm pretty sure it was bent. But it probably could have driven away. Yeah. And I, but the thing is, I hit the wall. I hit the wall that hard. Yeah. But you know, the, the rear ends in those things back then were like built like brick shit houses. Yeah. So um, it hit hard, and I went, "Oh, she's bugging." And then yeah. I stupidly just decided to get out. But anyway, it made for better entertainment. If I'd got out, if I'd driven away, would any of this lovely no. footage happen? <laughs> I, 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 sort of, I sort of figured you, were, you wanted to get out of the no, car. No, I didn't. So bad to rip his head off. No, you, I, didn't. You I, to... I had no intention there. I didn't right. see what happened to him, you know. Yeah. Um, and and I, didn't, I didn't realise what had happened until afterwards, how bad, you know, how yeah. significant it was. 
But, you know, I did actually, I hit the wall pretty hard and I thought, ah, man, she's, she's broken. And yeah, and the natural instinct was to stop, which was stupid. I should have just kept driving mm -hmm. and seen what happened. But it, it is what it is. And, <laughs> yeah. and um, uh, yeah, it's, one of the boys would be able to confirm it. Steve Henderson is probably the guy who was engineering the car at the time. <laughs> mm -hmm. And he'll probably vividly remember, you know, what was actually wrong with it or not. And, um, but that's cool. Yeah. I mean, that's, I mean, you can just get the highlights real and there's so much of that sort of stuff. But that's what yeah. makes this joint pretty special yeah, and, yeah. and what's obviously attracted you back here again, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I've, Hopefully I feel very, not like that. But, I feel I mean, very <laughs> privileged to be here this, you know, yeah. doing this because it's not, it's not the norm and it's almost like you're stealing the opportunity from someone else. But, um, you know, I never thought this would happen. I never thought I'd be back doing this, you know? This wild card thing's a good idea though, isn't it? I mean, it's oh, a good it idea. It is a great idea. Well, it's look at look, yeah. yeah, Murph and Lance. Two wild cards. Yeah. And the field, personally, <laughs> yeah. personally I feel cool. the field. And the charters are there too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I feel the field needs yeah. needs more than 25. I've always thought it needs 25, more than 25 yeah, cars. Of course. You know? yeah. it, needs, it needs 30 cars on the grid, Absolutely. I reckon, every year. Um, and, and now with the quality of, of you know, operations delivering it. But, but a, of course, the cost is always something that is prohibitive. You know, there's not, not everyone's got a couple of spare, a couple of hundy lying around to, to make this happen. Well, and good. then on top of that, yeah, Russ Carl. charges like a couple of hundy just to get out of bed. So <laughs> it's a very expensive deal. Come on, mate. Now, now you're having a go at me about... Sorry. You're having Sorry. a go at me about money, all right? About money. Now, someone... This just bought a new toy, right? A new toy. I shudder to think what this thing has cost you. And ha make no mistake, I'm jealous of shit. <laughs> All right. Big style. I'm so jealous of this thing. You've just bought yourself a new toy. Well, I didn't. I haven't bought it. I've, I've just been paying for it for years. But yeah, yeah. It's um. How's this thing? Oh shit. That's a better. That's a much better picture. So, so you you did you? So you had a Dodge, did you send, someone yeah. told me you sent a Dodge Charger over there that you bought. I sent, I sent the, the body shell, yeah. um, which was sitting on a chat, on a Art Morrison chassis, I sent that to Ring Brothers in the, in the United States. Who yeah. are one of the top yep. custom at builders. The of, it yeah. arrived over there at the end of 2018 and I only got it back in May. Really? <laughs> yeah. So it was a big build? Uh, COVID was a, you know, obviously yeah, a, yeah. a bit of a shitter, but yeah, it was a big build. Yeah. Had a look at some of the photos, unbelievable. Yeah. How cool. It was like it's a lot of money, but I can't fault it. Uh, you see, you see where it all is. You see where most of it is, as far as yeah, the cost. I mean, hours. It's it's, it's um, labour, labour cost. Man hours. Yeah, when thousands, I, when thousands. I saw, when I, I, I'm. You just talk, what? You, you, said <laughs> I, you said I was going to be on first. Hey. Are you pushing people around again? <laughs> hey, Jay. <laughs> you, you've got you've got yourself in enough trouble. All right. <laughs> I think you know this guy, don't you? <laughs> Barry Ryan, Erebus Motorsport, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> now, he did get himself in a little bit of trouble, made some headlines uh, not that long ago in, uh, in NZ. Um, and uh, there, there's... <laughs> can you believe, Barry, can you believe, right? Shocking scenes. Uh, shock... <laughs> Who, who, shock who comes up with this crap? Uh, Fox Sports. Are you sick? Shock <laughs> scenes as Winterbottom pushed and abused. Like, that was seriously. probably one of the nicest ones. What, what, <laughs> what sort of tabloid? Oh, I, I don't it get makes it. you laugh, doesn't it? Yeah. I don't get it. Like, has, yeah. it, has it surprised you? I mean, everyone, everyone knows the story, what went on. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, has so it surprised you? Yeah, you know, I, I did something wrong. I pushed someone in this day and age, you can't. So I accept that, and I did accept that, and I told the sport to come down heavy on me. So you know, <laughs> I, I didn't care what they said. Yeah. Is it, uh, has it surprised you though? Has it shocked you a bit, the reaction yeah, on Yeah, not really. Overboard? After I did it, actually Paul rang me like five minutes after it aired and he sort of said, oh, well, you're probably going to get in trouble for this with some of the, you know, the, you know, people around that are, you know, sensitive about it. But um, I sort of said, oh, well, yeah, whatever happens, happens. But, you know, he shouldn't have come in my garage. I told him to F off a few times and didn't listen and then wanted to just yap on about some crap about meaning to do it and... You know, just reaction well, what to what Will he, did. He and, just yeah. wouldn't leave. He just wouldn't leave. So, and what was the? If I was a bouncer, I would have done worse than that, wouldn't I? I mean, when you view yeah. it, when you view it, I, I, th I didn't think it was a big deal to, no. to me when you when you look at it. It, it um, I, I thought it was pretty minor. I yeah. mean, you got people. I don't think understand the emotion of involved in these situations, right? You've just got a. $500,000 race car, which is a oh, smouldering right. yeah. piece of mm. crap sitting there. And, and, <laughs> well, and, the, and the driver laying on the ground. And the driver. Let's, yeah. let's not forget about him. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. right. Yeah. 
So yeah. it's, it's, an issue. It's, it's, it's one of those situations. We all react. I think we just saw a video of, me, of a couple of blokes being a little bit bloody reactive uh, to a situation. Okay. Before we each other, so uh, right. Should have, maybe. Yeah, but I mean, I, I, and, I mean he, and he should have probably he probably should have pushed me too. Yeah, you know? exactly. do, do you think though, dude? Like at the end of the day, that's a, it, it's. I mean, yes, it made headlines and all the rest of it, but any publicity is good publicity. <laughs> made made headlines everywhere, but I mean, it's promoting the sport. I mean, oh, at the end of the day, the and, and it wasn't a big deal. The TV cameras followed you down after it all happened. They're going, oh, there might be some people that are a bit soft and upset about this. Yeah. Why don't we refer it to the stewards? And what did the stewards do? Basically, nothing really. So yeah, it satisfied yeah. all the soft people out there and yeah, yeah, true. And, Absolutely. and ticked the box and... Reprimand. Yeah, yeah. it was a nothing really, was it? You compare it to, say, a rugby, rugby league game when um, you know, one of the big guys pushes a guy into the fence and he gets knocked out. Then all the, all the rest of the team comes in and defends him and try, you know, pushes yeah. that guy around and says, hey, you, know, you shouldn't have done that in the you know, Rugby league, they don't even worry about it. You know? Well, even supercars, you know, if Tony Cochran's probably still in charge, he would have stood up for you, I reckon. Mm. So did anyway. you get thrown under the bus a bit with it all? Oh yeah, I, I threw myself under the bus. I just said, yeah, I did something wrong, just do whatever you want. I don't, I don't care, I'm, I'll move on. Yeah. And I was just worried about Bathurst. That's all, all I'm worried about. Mm -hmm. yeah. And everything's... So, <laughs> how's, the, uh, how's the car? Yeah, get the car new. too? Yeah, the, yeah. Ca the car's actually really good. You know, we did a yeah, we fabricated an awesome job. We took it over. About, but within about 10 hours of it landing back in Melbourne, we were in Mount Gambier on the, on the jig. Cutting the hole back off it, and um, yeah, it's brand new. Pretty much from the main hoop back, it's brand new. So, Amazing job cars as good as new. Yeah. A few really. late nights, you didn't really need it, but then again, we didn't actually. We actually, it was really well managed between our fabrication department and our mechanical department. That we really did like 10, 11 hour days max. And that's the mm -hmm. best way to do it because then you can come in the next morning and keep Still working. Still keep going yeah. fresh. Yeah. Was, but when, yeah. When you look at that sort of thing, though, that's what. That's why I think I like the early era of racing because it's nothing new. Yeah. I mean, we've seen plenty of things over the years, and, and drivers having a bit of a, a bit of a run at each other. You know, so you, you're in a couple here and there. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, uh, I, I, I don't yeah. think. Well, Have you got a video of that? <laughs> yeah, we might. Yeah, <laughs> right? I didn't do it. We, we, yeah, we might. But I mean, you know, it, it's. Uh, I remember there was one with uh, Stephen. Richards Rick and Rick Kelly. Kelly. Yeah. Uh, that was yeah. 2010 um, at uh, in Tasmania. Um, they had a fair, they had a fair run. You Nothing happened him. here. Oh, he pushed shit. him. It was like she was on. Like yeah, here he's we just go. His <laughs> like you know, Richo is on the front foot there. He's, he's having a bit what of. About, a, he's what getting about NASCAR? No, yeah. they lob helmets while they're on the track. What about NASCAR? What happens? What happens? Does anyone get up and up in arms and get all upset and about that? Or no, no NASCAR give well, them a fine and then take it off them. Uh, no, well, no. the good. Good thing about NASCAR, they sort of let it go until it gets too out of control. Then they say, right, guys, you're going to kill each other. Back it off, or otherwise yeah. you're out for a few rounds. Yeah. So they, they understand it's entertainment. You know, yeah, you don't want to hurt anyone no, and you don't condone violence in any way. But it's entertainment. You know, it's emotion, well, yeah. it's passion. The big boys, you know, take, yeah. I mean, you know. Yeah, it's, that should have been sorted out between... You know, Mark, Mark and Barry, so you two got, you, if you guys can't sort it out, we will. That yeah, should have been yeah, the exactly, end of it. Exactly right. Yeah. What, what, what happened? With the label. Hey? I live with the label of being a violent, shocking scene creating person. You like that? Yeah. yeah. And, well, it's the, the hatchet job <laughs> they did on the editing of the... Uh, what actually happened thing. with your one, with, with Longhurst? Did anything actually happen there? <laughs> like like uh, official-wise? Uh, I think it was a 10 grand fine to Tony. Was it? Yeah. Here we go! Oh, so they got yes! Yeah. Was it, it was. Winston? Was it Winston? Yeah, Winston. it was interesting. Yeah. Think about yeah. it. <laughs> both two cars, and both like you're from the same team as well, which uh, yeah. actually, um, yeah. <laughs> now, look at his nah. He's getting out before it's even jumped. Belt off. Belt off. Well, there we go. Oh, this is the wheels actually in a lock here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. Why, why are we laughing? That's shocking. That's, That's shocking. Crazy. That is yeah. shocking, Barry. Hey, hey, that I is think, shocking. I think the best part of that was didn't didn't the Karina win the race? No, no, it got red flag. Oh, it got red flag. Got red flag. Yeah. Oh. Went back a lot. Oh. 
Yeah. Oh, they, they, there's young Tim. Yeah, there's Tim. <laughs> uh, young oh. Terry copped com a bit on now, the way now, through, too. Now, what did that do for the sport, though? Mate. What, oh. did, what did that do for Super it, Touring? It made, yeah. it made headlines Across everywhere. Across the world. Across, like, it put Super Touring. That was probably the best publicity. I oh, still get a call, like, every year or two. Someone from America, the world's biggest dummy spits, wanting to talk about that thing. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Some TV show they they, they keep regurgitating. Uh, they always have got my number. That's good. Yeah, yeah. good though. You know, I mean, that, and that's what I miss now. And if they start dulling down too much of this, yeah. um, and 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 I liken it to, you know, when you look at the Netflix, which everyone, might, I mean, that's put F1 on the map. Is mm the drive yeah. to survive thing, right? But what I see about that is that, yes, it's highlighted the driver's personality, which is great, but also the team principals and team owners and how all of a sudden it's elevated them because they've got personalities that, you know, they have a go. So and what, what about last, so last year, Formula One? Yeah. Max and Lewis, they were at each other, right? Yeah. The, 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 the comments, the, you know, the verbal stuff, all that, okay, there was no push and shove. Yeah. When Max got out of that car after he was parked on top of Lewis and just walked away, all that stuff. Have you, how much F1 have you watched this year? Every? No, this year? Oh, this year? It's boring as batshit. Oh, really? Yeah. I've been watching it. Last year, I was engaged oh, with it. Yeah, I was enough. engaged with it because yeah. of the, the well, team well. principles that were going, you know, Toto yeah. making yeah, all sorts yeah. of... You know, and it finished right at the end at Abu Dhabi with all that controversy. And it was like, man, that's, yeah, that's true. that is mega. Yeah, this yeah. year, it is as quiet as quiet. Lewis is just complaining and whinging like Freddy's he does. And that's about it. Yeah. yeah. So um, so it's, it was much more interesting but last year. It still year to shows watch. you, though, that there's more to the element than just the drivers, it's the so team more. principals, and, and, and because they're getting microphones shoved in front of their face during an event. And, and you want to hear what's going on. You just don't want to hear, oh, well, you know, yeah, the car's good. and. Yeah, we're hoping that we will go. Like, you want yeah, a bit more. They not want to talk up. Like, when they walk the guns, they'll go, oh, shit, what are they trying to get me to say? You're going to do hide in the back of the garage and not talk to it anymore? You better no, not. No, I still will. <laughs> I'll probably get yeah. worse. I'll yeah. just, yeah, I'll probably just swear more and still push someone. Yeah, yeah I don't know. Oh, don't. Don't dull it down. Like, be, <laughs> be, be yourself and don't worry about what these other. Num nuts say, eh? like just have a have best a good go. Is, the best thing is the sponsor support I had from guys like Pete and Earl from Shore and Partners and Steve down here. They, yeah. they all supported me and said, "Don't worry, yeah, about don't, it. don't let so, the establishment yeah. knock you yeah. down." You, I mean, it's these guys that you want to worry about, not yeah. the establishment. Yeah, right? but, so. mate, if, I'm, if I was a driver, that's the guy I want to be driving for. The guy's yeah. gonna stick up for me. Damn straight. Remember, I removed uh, what's the name from. The pit at Indy. Oh, the American Alex Tagliani. Alex Tagliani. Yeah. He was having a blue with you because you turned him around. Oh, funny as hell. He didn't, <laughs> didn't get on camera, but Alex Tagliani, if you've never heard of him, he raced IndyCar. He was actually half, half a rear steerer and an open wheeler. Yeah. Shit house in a touring car. And he, he's, uh, it was a Gold Coast Are race. Are you watching, Alex? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, anyway, he was blocking and carrying on, so I fired him off anyway. So he's come to the pits, and we were all eating ice creams. The whole day at Gold Coast, right? We were all eating ice creams, and he's come on and going nuts. Like, you know, da 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 so Paul's just grabbed, picked him up, <laughs> I can put him out, I'm eating ice cream going, holy shit, this is good. Out of the garage. <laughs> out of the garage, plucked him out, you, out of here. He's gone, oh, geez, okay. <laughs> Off he's gone. <laughs> Funny as hell, it was great. Best, and I'm just sitting there eating ice cream. Like, Thanks, Paul. <laughs> no, it's, it's all good, but anyway, but that's what makes it fun. Mm. Guys, we're going to let you go because you've you got a bloody yeah. big week. Thank you very much. Ah, pleasure. Thanks, coming. boys. Uh, yeah. Good luck. <laughs> Good luck. Thank you. Good luck, Dad. Thank you, mate. Yeah, there. Yeah. Back to Paul. Paul, yeah. Very good. Great to, great to get an insight. Huh? Great to get an insight from Murph about the differences in the cars and... That's going to be good to watch, isn't it? Oh, it is. And like, and like I said... As you said, driving around Winton to driving around here. Mate, and I, and I, I know, I honestly believe the wet... And it's going to be a wet race at some stage, if not all day. Man, it's going to throw a curveball. And, that, and that's what I like about this race, I think, um, is when there is rain and when it's wet, it takes away the predictability. You know, because, think on your feet. Yeah, because everyone's going to say, oh, it's going to be Shane Van Gisbergen or Cam Waters or Will Davis, you know. But all of a sudden, it's going to throw curveballs into it because then it's going to come down to strategy. Uh, guys that can drive in the wet, I mean, you might get some Super 2 guys, co-drivers. Some of them are bloody good in the wet. Yep. You know, they, all of a sudden, they spring into action. 
So that's the good thing about it. I think it's going to be... Um, Stand away in the wet, mate. Look out, I'm telling you. Yeah, I reckon they're going to be, yep. they're going to be a good show. Um, what does it take to win this race, dude? You've won it. I've been lucky enough to, to win it. What does it take to win this joint? You need, you need a lot of luck. You need someone really fast in the car at the end of the day. Like, you've got to have car speed for the last stint. Yeah. And you're not going to lose it. You know, you, you can't have something dumb go wrong because it's very hard to recover from it. So, it's, um, it's, a, lot, it's, it's a hard <laughs> one to win, mate. Easy no, to lose. No, no mistakes. Fast co-driver. I mean, I, I don't think you can underestimate the pit crew how big a part they play in this, you know, to make sure that when you come in, wheel changes are good, brake everything's cans. on the same, yeah, yeah, brake changes, and they're pretty tricky at the best of times, like you've got red hot discs coming off the things, calipers. Um, I think Bathurst is truly, truly a team effort to win the joint. Oh, no, dead, dead set is, Russ, that's why, you know, the, the battle just in pit lane now because of the, the boom preference, you know, you've got two fast cars and who, if you've got a yellow flag and you're lining up behind your teammate, so the first race you have has got to be in front of your, your teammate, right? To and that'll be the two already. thing with the two wild cards to watch. You've got the super, super cheap auto wild card and you've got yep. the boost mobile wild card, but whoever's got track position is going to have boom, boom preference. So there's a race going on within the race within the team. Yep. So it's, it's an interesting one to watch. Yeah, it is. Well, we've got a two colourful characters coming on for the next one. Right. All right. Um, one that's very outspoken and one that's very opinionated. You can determine which is who, all right? So I won't, <laughs> I won't prompt that one, OK? Uh, but as I said right from the way go, that's why we have them on, because they've got an opinion about things and strong opinions, and they might not agree. Hopefully they won't agree, and we might see a bit of aggression tonight. Well, I think with these two guys, yeah. they respect, also respect other people's opinions. True. Which is, and don't get, don't tear up if someone doesn't agree with them, so. All right. That's, that's probably the difference. All right. Let's get them on here. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, Peter Adderton. How are you, Ryan? Steve Marbon. say that. All right. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah, you go. Middle yeah. would be all right. Dude. Uh, Dean, how are you, mate? How are you? I haven't seen you for a while. Not since two o'clock. Soft noon? Yeah. <laughs> Pete. How are you, Russell? We'll start with Paul? you. Yeah, why not? Well done getting this wild card back yeah, on the no, here. Yeah, no, thank you very much. Good. 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 I, uh, I, told, uh, I told Greg last night I was making him relevant again, so... Uh, yeah. Look at these did go down that well. Hang on. Oh, hang on. <laughs> Jesus! <laughs> Yeah. I'd hang rather on. be that guy. Hang on, no. <laughs> no look that, at that guy. Looks no, that was, no, no. That was Pete no, no, no. 10 years ago, so you haven't changed. No, no, exactly. Right. Yeah. That, that was you a year ago. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's what supercars have done to you, mate. Uh, retirement. This <laughs> retirement. <laughs> retirement's done. No, but it is... Sorry, but yeah, it, is, yeah. it is great to get that you could have easily... And that's what we said to Merck, could have easily parked her up after last... Yeah, but you've kept on and, no, and you smashed it out. We did it for the fans, and I also did it for... A lot of people don't realise, I, I did it for a lot for, uh, for Richie. Um, you know, back in 2017, 18, I had this idea just to, as a marketer that I wanted to do something different. So when Richie got kind of removed out of Tickford, I didn't even know Richie. And I thought it'd be a really good story to actually bring in Richie and get Garth to be thrown out, right? So I thought that'd be great. Problem is that everybody hated Richie because I removed Garth. Right. And Roland loved it. He picked yeah. up the oh, yeah, well, yeah, well, yeah, he, he, he did. I did a few, Roland. So, <laughs> so Thanks, it was really hard for Richie. So I was like, I just felt really bad inside myself for doing that, right? He's a young kid, and I was kind of playing a marketing game along with him. And I was like, you know what? That wasn't right. So I said, Richie, in 2009, he was on the way to the airport, and he said, I'm never going to race again. He actually left his helmet. He just left it. He just wow. walked away. He didn't even want his helmet. He didn't even know what his helmet was. And I said, Richie, this can't be the last chapter. Right? I, I just cannot be the last chapter. Just give yourself a couple of years. Let me try to work on something because I don't want you to end this way. And he's like, no, nah, I'm never going to race again. I'm never going to race again. Wow. So I was really glad that, that he came back. He's come back in a great mental space. He's come back great physically. And uh, as I said, most being fantastic. So I'm super excited for, for those guys. I will say he is going quick. I mean, we're just kind of keeping it down a little bit, but I think he's really focused and ready mm -hmm. to, uh, to, to, to make it happen. So yeah, it was good. And the wild card, I mean, 
we kicked off with it last year with the, with the super cheap wild card and, and it's growing and hopefully it's going to continue to grow. It's a great initiative. Yeah, we're, try, we're trying to take the pensioner element out of it for the car and put it into the team. Thanks, Mark. Yep. <laughs> um, so <laughs> reduce the average age of the driver a bit, uh, which we've done. Actually, you can now come clean now that you really have stopped driving. Here we go. Get your passport out yeah. and let's have a look at your date of birth, right? Because seriously, I reckon you're right up there with me. Which what? makes it pretty impressive. Well, hang on, here. if you want my details, just jump on the Optus website. You'll be able to yeah. <laughs> It's all on mine. No, it's good. good. I like that. <laughs> it's it's good to... Um, how much did he pay you to say that? Uh, that, was, <laughs> I, that was straight off the top. No, you still, oh, still, still got it. Oh, mate, I still got it. I still got it. No, it's good, to, it's good mm. to have the wild card back. Uh, great initiative by Super Cheap. Uh, they, you know, when they first came on board with, uh, with Triple Eight several years ago, uh, the guy who is in charge of all the purchasing at, um, for, for super cheap stores, um, a pommy guy, uh, Steve Lewis, he said to me, have you got a spare car lying around here? And that's how the whole thing was born about uh, doing, the, um, doing the wild card. And uh, so hopefully it carries on mm. with, the, with the idea of trying to have a young bloke in there, you know, blooding a, a, a young driver uh, and pairing him uh, last year with you, this year with, with Lanzi, uh, it's working, working really well. So we've got a good crew together and we'll see how we go. But uh, You come out of retirement to, uh, yeah. to run the thing? I came out That'd of be retirement. Fun. That'd be fun. Yeah, less, no, less, I'm less enjoy, I enjoy the interaction with the guys and the girls on the team that I can see how everyone's progressed and etc. Mm -hmm. The great group of, of people on that car, we come, yeah. <laughs> come together from other parts of the business and everything. So uh, I'm enjoying it so far. Just to be a favor, yeah. when you see the blue flag, just let Richie and Greg through, will you? So just don't want you guys holding us up, mate, right? So just uh, don't hold us up. I mean Shane's car, not, not your uh, oh, other one. Yeah, <laughs> your wild car's fine. Just, if, if Shane's in our way, just get him to get out of the way, will you? How's he yeah, going right. to go, you two in the same garage? Oh, well, he's, it's not, actually allowed, gonna be he's not allowed in the garage. Why? Have you been banned? Didn't you see the notes? Oh, have I been banned? Yeah. I heard I was banned. Yeah, Serious? Yeah, I know you're happy. But I never listened to anyone anyway. No, so you're not banned. <laughs> yeah. But you weren't banned by us. No. No, it's your own crew. My own crew. <laughs> your own crew put a note. No Addison's in here. How's that, how's that V6 going, Roland? <laughs> I gotta tell you a story. So I made you a bet. How much no, money we made out of the V6? <laughs> no, I had a bet with this guy about whether the V6s would be running. I think it was 2017, 18. I said, Roland. Thousand bucks, there'll never be a V6 on this mountain. You took the bet, you never paid. I'm gonna make it. No, Are you I'm, saying that no, there'll I'm, never be a V6 no, running on the mountain? Never be a V6 running never. on the Never, ever. Okay. Let me tell you, not in our lifetime, Roland. Oh, right. Okay. Maybe in our kids' lifetime. But let okay. me tell you, I'm gonna make you a deal, all right? I'm gonna let you off the thousand dollar bet. Okay, thanks very You've much. You gotta buy man. everybody in this room a beer. You gotta shout, <laughs> everyone a beer. And you guys are special, right? You'll be the first ones in the world to be shouted by Roland a beer for doing absolutely nothing for him. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's because you've never been to one of our after parties here oh, after we oh, won the race. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. Oh, okay, okay, Mr. Winner. So, I, I pay it, Roland. You guys done a fantastic job at cheating. So, uh, yeah, yeah. There's you. I actually so. I, Give me I, which example. Well, I spoke to. Ryan the other day, I said, I want one of those Chaz Walkinshaw engines, right? He goes, they're all the same. And I go, no, they're not. If there are, you send Chaz's engine down and we'll send ours back up there. You all cheat, let's be honest. Oh. <laughs> you shouldn't judge everyone by your own standards. Oh, I gotta tell you, if I could find a way to cheat and win and not get caught, I'd do it, but I can't. Okay. So, Penske did. Yeah, that's Penske you, did a good job That's because you sponsor yourself. Exactly, good point. <laughs> If you've got sponsors to worry about, yeah. you don't cheat. He's very sensitive on this cheating part, I've got to oh, tell very. you. very. <laughs> so, so, See, dude, uh, I, I told you having these two on. We no. don't have to say anything. No. We're no. getting <laughs> just crazy. No, no, it's true, we are. We're going to inject, there'll be another stewards inquiry soon. And yeah. <laughs> there's probably no, some no, physical like, contact. Let's be honest, Triple Eight. I mean, Rolly, you, I watched your inside. This is your life, actually. I watched the show on Fox. <laughs> <laughs> All about Roland. Um, which was, and? Which is, mate, you're a very impressive guy. I've got to be honest with you. I, he is an incredible guy. I mean, 
the fact you got all those guys saying nice things about you, I've actually heard what Lazy Eye... No, no, I've heard all the team owners who are coming out saying nice stuff about him. I've actually heard what they really think of you, and I'm sitting there going, they're <laughs> full of shit. They don't think of that, right? <laughs> but oh, they he's, but he's they, tough, but he's fair. If they do think that, they haven't got the balls to say They won't, that's public. the problem. They don't have the right? balls. They, they don't say dare to say it in public. And uh, unfortunately, what, there's, there's two things I've, I hate about this country out of all the good things. One, speed limits. Yep. And the, other, and the other is tall poppy syndrome. Yep. Right? Absolutely. <laughs> and tall poppy syndrome. Yep. It doesn't matter whether you're a driver, a team owner, a successful businessman, uh, or, or, or lady. Got good hair. Uh, whatever. Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> you, honestly. But by this is coming from a guy who sent us all here. To say <laughs> <laughs> Mate. That's uh, English. Uh, Convicts. That's you, us. Remember where I came from. And it certainly wasn't England. I ca- you born in from? Ireland. You were born in Ireland. No, I've got an Irish ah, passport. Ah, now it all comes with together. With my Australian Why well, he doesn't buy beers? My Irish passport. <laughs> <laughs> huh? Why well, you don't buy beers? Right? I now realise why you're so anyway, tight. Anyway, can we get back Ireland. to motor racing? Oh, yeah, so, <laughs> any, any, chance, any, any chance we talk about that racy stuff? You know, <laughs> is, is that, that why we're here? Well, that's why you're here, mate. No, I thought it was right just your life. <laughs> hey. Yeah. I saw something online that at the local GC600 launch. Yes. Uh, GC500. They knocked a hundred off of it. I bet you the emission, I can add it for you, Russ. The admission's still the same. Yep. <laughs> that you jumped up and said, introduce yourself as the underbidder for supercars. <laughs> yes, I did. That didn't go down well. No, that didn't. No, uh, I was about to say, Shane, you could have been working for me, but that, <laughs> I deal back that part. Yeah, so. OK. Yeah, when we tried to buy supercars, but Roland blocked us. Probably don't know that. Yep. Um, he was on one of the two people that were looking after it. But, uh, no, we, we tried to buy it. I think we would have been the natural right owners for it. Um, we didn't pay what they wanted us to pay for it because we just didn't think it was worth it. We were going to invest back in the sport. And, you know, Roland knows this. I, I'm extremely passionate about the sport. We put our own money in. We put millions of dollars of our own money into the sport. And I still think this is the best sport in the world bar none. I think it's up there with the top five, honestly. And we just seem to screw it up, you know, <laughs> as the guys that are running and get involved. And I'm like, it could be so much better. And so, yeah, we, we tried to bid it. We wanted it. We loved it. You know, Paul was joining me on the journey. Um, Paul's got a great ability to understand the car, and um, but we just obviously we didn't tick the right boxes. So um, well, it was the money one. Ah, but you know, <laughs> he was retiring. He, we didn't know he was retiring. Neither did anyone else. So he just took the chess. What, and, what you, what's, your, what's your impressions at the moment? The way well, it's been going. Well, I think it's exactly the same, which is the problem. I think it's it, you know. I was talking to Roland back there before. You know, you look at his inside line and you see the fans, right? The thing I was surprised about, because I've been in America for 20 years, how many fans were there in 2005, 6, 7? And I said to Roland, where'd they all go? Like, they're not there now. They're not dead. So how do you get them back? Some of them are, but not all of them. But I'm sitting back going, how do you get them back? So I think the... Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm like, it's all about the fans, and I think they've lost it. I think it's become a bit of an elitist sport, and I think we need to go back to the core roots. And that's why we did the wild card. I was up on the hill today, right? Wandering around in the mud, hanging out in some of the tents up there. Did you get recognised? My, I did get recognised, Paul. But I can guarantee there wasn't one supercar official up there with me. You know, Barclay wasn't up there with me. There was no one else, right? And I'm like, that's what you need. You need to get back and get engaged with those fans. Otherwise, you lose them. And who cares? You know, what, it doesn't what do you really think, matter. Ron? Look, I, I look at it. And uh, as, as uh, Peter said, we were talking at, <laughs> at the back there just now about the, the need to build up this. I keep hearing stories about trying to go to Singapore as a support category for the Grand Prix or this or that, and even moving the Bathurst date to try and do that. I and mean, that's just all bullshit, right? Mm-hmm. It, it is utter bullshit. We should be concentrating on getting the racing back to where it should be, or the, the crowds back to where they should be in Australia. I mean, you saw Pukekohe was fan- I didn't go there, but I saw it on TV. It was awesome. Yeah, it the, was <clears throat> the people, yeah. the number of people there. We've got to build that back up here. We've got to support not only the street circuits, like you know, yep. the, the Gold Coast, fantastic. Townsville, yeah. I love it. Uh, Adelaide, of course. But we also got to support the traditional circuits. You got to support the people who put the money in, not just government money. But you know what the Shahins have done in South Australia is awesome. So, uh, the, the track should have a 500 there. Yes. What Tony Quinn is doing at Queensland Raceway, he's rescued it from lowest common denominator, you know, mm-hmm. junk really where it had gone down to, and brought it up. Spent his own money there. We should be supporting those events and not talking about going to Singapore. 
That's the, that's the, the fundamental starting point for me. And then concentrating on building that, <laughs> building that product. You must admit, Paul, from what you saw and from what I saw at, at Pukekohe, the fans are there, mm. but it's like they need a special event or a special reason, yeah, like being the last one, to they, come out to. They'd been starved. But they're a bit. there, they're there, but you just have to, like and you said, And it was said, the last Book of Coe and you had Shane. It, like, that, that was a magic recipe to have a sell out crowd, right? But mm. if you promote the sport well, there should be a magic, ma a magic recipe everywhere you go. You just got to tell everyone. That's yeah. happening. So you, you, so they're there, you need they, a marketer or a salesperson. But you do. But you look at the polls. Tell you look the at the story. polls right now. Of who's your favourite pairing, right? Craig's up there. Greg and Richie up there. All these other teams, like not even one percent, zero percent on the poll, right? Mm. So you've got Shane, who obviously gets a uh, you know favourable treatment. But you've got those guys sitting up the top, and then our guys there, and then even our other teams drivers are down the bottom. And if that's not evident of how poor the sport's going, that we can bring back. You know, Greg and Craig, and the level goes up, the excitement goes up. There's a problem with the core sport because at some point we can't roll Lounsey out yeah. and we can't roll Greg out. You, you can't, Peter, but you've also seen examples where motor racing has, has done that as well in other categories. You remember when Formula One brought Nigel Mansell back in 1994 because Ayrton and Senna had been killed and they panicked, <laughs> said we needed yeah. Nigel Mansell yeah, yeah. back. And so, and he, um, I think he actually. Uh, that year, 94, he might have won at, uh, at Adelaide that year when he came back because other people tripped over, you know, Schumacher and, and Hill, and he won the race. But actually, they didn't really need him, and, he, and the, the, the thing had enough momentum without him. But they, they panicked and thought they did. I think it's great to have those personalities around, but we've actually got to build up the oh, other ones. That's my point. My yeah. point is it's taking the, the old guys to bring it up. The young guys should be able to bring that sport back up. We, we talk about this all the time. No one really knows who these drivers are. You put them on the corner of a street. Like, we knew who you were. We knew who Paul was. We knew who Brocky was. We knew... When I was growing up, I knew the drivers, right? And right now, you see them walk past you on the side of the street, probably don't even know who they are, right? And I think that's the part that we have to fix. We've got to broaden the sport than just the fans, the core fans. We've got to make a bigger audience, which just basically yeah, raises the sport. We need the personalities of the drivers yeah. to come through. And at the moment, they're, they're too scared to say or do anything yeah. because it's all driven around sponsorship and how people should think. That's why we, like a sponsor yeah. like you is great, because you, you want the headline. But I'm not in that. We're so woke. It drives me around the bend, right? Yeah. It really frustrates me. Man, maybe it's just me being old, but... I love people to have an opinion. You know, I used to get slammed all the time, right? On, on when I'd say something, people would come on and slam it. I'd actually repost those slams because I loved it. Right? I love people having an opinion. If it didn't agree with me, that's great. Mm. If they hated me, fantastic. They're engaged with me, right? They took the time in their hate to go on and actually comment back mm. on, a, on a post. So the wokeness that's there now, you know, I know Barry was out here explaining it. And I rang Barry and I said, Barry, who cares? Right? It's fantastic. You showed passion. Your driver got hit with a 50 CG, you know, hit into the wall. Don't apologise for what you did, right? That's just part of life. So I think that we need to get rid of that, right? Cut all that out. But, you know, right now, people are concerned. Right? They don't want to say something mm -hmm. or do something that might upset somebody. I, frankly, don't care. So, to make, so is... You've got to create the rivalries and, and all the rest of it on the track. Is Gen 3 going to be the answer for that, that, that we see more, <laughs> more aggressive racing? And is Gen 3 the answer? Well, it's not... It's, because that's still it's, part of it, because the, the, when you say about personalities, and we saw it there all over the years, you know, and, yeah. and when we had Murph on here in the early days, they were true rivalries. Like, we, they were like, real. like, I hated plenty of drivers, and they hated me, and yep. Murph was in the same boat, and there was a lot of drivers in there because we were aggressive on the track and we got stuck into each other. I think the rivalries start with the racing, so is Gen 3 the answer? Well, it, I think it can be part of, part of the answer because hopefully it allows more wheel-to-wheel -wheel racing than we get at the moment. Um, so it can be part of the answer, but it's still got to come from the drivers. But if we're honest about each other, um, when we... I, th I think there's a lot of that exists now, but it's just people are scared to say it in public, right? We've all become too politically correct. But when... when I think it was touched on in the Fox documentary. I can promise you that uh, 10 years ago or whatever, Tanda's face was, was in our lunchroom as a dartboard, right? Yeah. <laughs> and that's, I yeah. love that. We, it's great. We, we hated... Now, yeah, he's brilliant. 
Don't worry. We have Roland's, Don't worry. We have Roland's <laughs> face in our dark room. But you, but you know what? In all that time, in all that time when we were racing against him, we absolutely respected him as one of the best racers on the track. We never lost that. But we hated them because we had to hate them to beat them. Yep. And, yeah, they, yeah. and so when we were on track, we hated next door. And that was always the ethos. So I said, you can't be mates with them. When Will Davison and Jamie were fighting for the championship in 2009, and Davo was driving for HRT, and Dutto was his engineer, and Dutto and I said to Jamie, stop going for a latte with that bloke. Yeah. Right? I know he's your best mate, but now you're going to hate each other for the last two months of the year. And that's what we did. And Davo's head went in Perth crashed on the entrance to the, to the pit lane. Because yeah. <laughs> we'd done his head in. His best mate wouldn't talk to him anymore, right? For, for a few weeks. We had to hate each other. And that's still there. I promise you, behind the scenes, it's still there at some level. It's just that we don't bring it out enough. You know, we don't actually tell the truth about what we really think. It's, it's a because we're all, we're all scared to, because we're too PC. You know, the yep. world is, is too PC. It's a good point. Between the three of you, I mean, you're, well, you're a retired team owner, supposedly. Uh, <laughs> you're, you're an ex-team owner, and you could be a team owner, right? I so, want to so, be a team owner. I want to be a team owner, right? I've been trying to get a team, but no one so, makes so me. So all three... Mate, you won't buy one. You're too mean. I'll buy one. <laughs> what are you talking about? Just go and buy one. If you offer enough money, somebody will sell it Everyone, Yeah, of course, I'm going to buy a loss. <laughs> they want me to buy a team for a profit that makes a loss. I don't, I'm not go an idiot. Buy one. No, I just want a wreck. He's, you guys sell me a wreck, I'll buy a wreck and create my own team. Saying, I've said it ten times. I will, they just don't want the competition. Anyway, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Go back to your point. You, you like... No, no, you understand. You should I, be turning left I, and you just go Roland right. Roland rang me. I was in America once and I was having an argument with him about something stupid. And he goes, listen, Addison, you know how to sell phones. I know how to run race teams. I want to run a race team just to shut him up. But he won't, <laughs> he won't let me in, mate. Just like the beer, he won't buy you guys. Anyway. <laughs> You're buying that beer, Roland. Anyway. Will be in currents. Um, <laughs> you own race team, right? So you're drivers, right? And 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 this annoys the absolute hell out of me is that, and you just touched on it about drivers being friends, right? Because the era that I grew, I was friends with no one. Shane's got no mates in there. I wouldn't think he'd. I think he socialised a bit with Scott Pye, but he fenced Scott Pye not too long ago as well. So. <laughs> Uh, and, and, and Shane will do that, and, and I really respect him for that side of it. But it seems to me, and, and I bring up an example, um, and the commentators brought it up during the race, it was Cam Waters and Chas Mostert. They were battling out for position or whatever. Mm. And Waters should have got him. Waters should have got him. Where was this? Oh, bugger if I know. I was just <laughs> watching a race. And uh, long and short of it is, then the commentators say, oh, yeah, they've been out snowboarding that week. And, uh, and, no. and I, uh, if it was me, I would have sacked him on the Monday. I don't want my driver second guessing, right? Second guessing because he's mates with another driver from a rival team um, that has championship imp implications. So, what, what's your thoughts on that? Well, well I know, I certainly know your thoughts because you said you got doubts and you're. Yeah. you're no, I, I'm exactly the same way. I get frustrated, you know, when I see, you know, even Shane and Cam and. Uh, in Pukekohe, right, where Shane obviously passed him and, and Cam was like, yeah, no, that was a really good race. And I'm like, you fucking came second, mate. <laughs> like, and it's almost like, Cam, I think he's used to being the bridesmaid of Shane. I, I think Shane is not just the only the best race car driver out there. I think mentally everyone's scared of him. So I think when they see his car in the rearview mirror, they change, right? They see Macaulay's car in the mirror, they go, oh, it's only Macaulay. They see Shane and they all tense up. And he's in the, every single driver's head. And so if I owned a team, I'd try to buy Shane off these guys if I could, or I'd tell to my drivers, you drive like Shane. When someone sees you behind there, they freak out. And now they don't freak out. Oh, it's just Cam. Right? And I'm like, it can't be, oh, it's just James Quinn. It can't be like that. And I think, you know, Roland's right. And that's why Triple Eight does so well, because he, he drills it into them. And you know, if we had a team, it'd be, I think it'd be even heightened. To that so yeah you've got to be scared of the people around you like you've got a guy behind you you've just got to see him and be intimidated dude what do you reckon would you be on the same boat or uh, I'd, i think you'd be friends with another driver and race the absolute hell out of each other on sunday and really 
and yeah. take it to the limit and still get out of the car and, and have a beer, I reckon you could do that. Yeah, we're seeing that this year in Formula One. Yeah. That like, was boring. I've had, I've had some mates that I've raced against and raced pretty hard. And, but, but you're a unique individual, Paul. Yeah. <laughs> let's, let's be honest. He's <laughs> unique. You, know, you, have to, you have to like them, but... Um, and they just have to accept that, you know, some days the, but Paul, the gloves are going to come off, you know? I don't, I don't think it's even necessarily about the, you know, sometimes it is, as I referred to with Jamie uh, a few years ago, but it's not necessarily driver to driver. It's team. Yes. The team has got to really want it. If yeah. the team doesn't really want it, they're not going to work hard enough, they're not going to back the driver hard enough, etc. It's no good the driver by himself just wanting it. You've got to have a team that's really hungry for it. It's no different from a footy code where you've got a you know, wall, brilliant right? centre forward mm -hmm. or something, you've got nobody yep. behind him. Yep. You've got to have a full, a full team behind you of people who are really hungry for it and who are polite to the people next door most of the time. And if you're in the shit, help each other, if you're genuinely yep. in the shit. But somewhere there's got to be that streak of meanness yeah, when push comes to shove, that you really want to beat them. Mm -hmm. In business, if you look at how we run Boost, right, around the globe, right, you know, Boost has gone from zero to a multi-billion dollar customer. We have almost 10 million customers. I started this thing in Sydney, right, 10 million customers to on two or three billion. If you talk to Jason and the guys who run Boost, our competitors we dislike with a passion. Our whole job is to basically bring them down. I tell these guys we don't like them. We want to beat them up. We want to, like when the hack happened with Optus, right? I was probably the only oh, one. Into oh, mate, I was straight into them, right? And, and I was like, you know what? This is what it takes. And you talk to our guys, we want to put the, you know, in business, you put the throat down. You, know? you put your foot on the throat and you squeeze them. You don't let them up. And I think that's how business works. And anyone who's actually run a large organization, getting customers is very, very hard, right? And so you've basically got to be ruthless. And I, we are ruthless at Boost. We want to make sure that our customers are the best, they're treated the best, customer care, across the board. If you do not have that mentality, you will never, ever succeed in anything. And these guys have it. Um, and I think that that's absolutely well, that's critical. That's why I want to bring this up, because I think it's really important for the fans to understand, you know, because you see from the outside and you see the teams, but you very rarely see an inside look into it and, and how they operate and the difference between the top levels. Everyone thinks, oh, it's just because they got faster cars. It's no. attitude as well. No, it's all... And that's why I was interested about the got, question. We got, so. we got faster cars because we work harder. Yeah. Right? Because we work harder, we, we <laughs> put, put more money into it. I just said nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I just said you had more money than everybody else. Yeah, because we work harder to get the money. No, I'm just that's saying. That's, what, that's know, what happens. You get up and... But it you get up and get know, the only one. It shouldn't be all about money. I think that's it one is, of the but, issues yeah. with the sport. The DJ, but, but Penske came go, in, right. raised the bar, won everything, and sucked his money out. And those guys eventually will run out of cash and they'll go back to Brad so, Jones Racing. But we've always had to get the money from the market. Nobody subsidised AAA. Yep. We've yep. had to go out and get the same dollar that you or you or you could go and, and fish for. Yep. We fished in that pond, got the money out of it that we could, yep. and then we put it to good use. Yeah, I'm not debating so, that. So that's, yeah, that's, that's fair I'm, enough. I'm, I'm, I'm not debating that at all, but I just said, if we're gonna have a competitive series, we've got to, like, you look at Formula One, right? The, guy yeah. with the market, there's a cap right going on, the argument yeah. around cap. Money does drive any motorsport in the no, world. No, any sport. Well, yeah, any you're sport. right, you're right, it does, any sport. Mm. But if you want to kind of make it, Okay. What's that? Because you have more, though, does that make you better? That's what she's well, because you've got to earn it in the first yeah, place. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Mm -hmm. Talent is talent. Mm -hmm. So no, I, it doesn't... You, you know, there's a point at which the money is diminishing returns on that money. Yeah. Okay? So, like a lot of things, if you want to prone plate your truck, then it doesn't really make you any faster on the, on the track. Yeah. So, but to get to the minimum that you need, right, you've got to work hard for it. But all sports are the same. The best footy clubs are the ones with the most money that consistently win over a long period of time. Best Formula One teams are the ones with the most money, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. That's that's the way it works. I'm sorry, we don't live in Cuba. If you yeah, want but, communism, but, go yeah. and live in Cuba. But but, but my attitude yeah. is then why not just have Red Bull and Shell turn up and race? And why, why are we all there? It used to frustrate well, me because well, when I turned up, okay. there were Stones and HRT, so yeah. I had to take them on. Sure, I, I get that. So all I'm take saying us is, on. you could spend two million dollars in the sport and know that your best result's going to be a ten, right? To yeah. me, 
So what I, I'm okay. Know? I'm okay with it. But you know, there are only a certain amount of teams and sponsors. Roland, it's getting harder and harder and harder for sponsors to justify spending four or five million dollars a car to get that car up the front. It's getting harder and harder and harder. You get some global brands that do it. So if you want to bring the whole sport up, so you've actually got ten guys. I know, and I believe with Gen 3, this is my honest truth, if we go to Newcastle, I know the calendar hasn't been announced, if we go to Newcastle, the grid's not going to look any different. It's going to be Triple Eight, Penske, uh, well, what are they called now? DJR. Yeah. It's going to be DJR. And then it's going to be a splattering and maybe Tickford, maybe we'll get up there. It's going to be exactly the same. I don't care what anybody says, so when we, it will not change. So when we went to the last generation in 2013, it was actually more winners that year the they, they were only, in 2012, there were only two t race teams, one races, Tickford and AAA. Yeah. The, the following year, Brad Jones Racing was winning, uh, GRM won with Scotty, M Scotty McLaughlin. In the Volvo? Sorry? In the Volvo? No, that was no, in the Holden. In the Holden. The year before the, before yep. the Volvo, in 2013, etc. There were more people winning, winning races so that year because the rules yeah. changed. Yeah. And then, they, then, the, then the rules settled. Etc. And, and the cream, the cream so, rises to the yeah. top. So I've got about a hundred witnesses here. I'm going to make another bet with Roland, and you're all my witnesses. I'm going to bet him another thousand. You want to go to five thousand? I'll go to five thousand. I, I care. Well, you are now. That the grid, <laughs> that the grid in Newcastle <laughs> will look <laughs> no, very, very <laughs> similar to the grids we have today. Five thousand. No, they'll be similar. Oh, they'll be exactly the same. You guys will be. Triple Eight will be at the front, and the rest of us will be fighting. And this was a sport that was supposed to create You're not equality. taking the bet. You're not taking the bet. <laughs> I'm not taking the bet because I don't bet. Yeah. But, but, but I reckon there will be a bit of a reset. Yeah, no, there will yeah. be. A thousand? Yeah, okay. All right, a thousand. You guys are witness. <laughs> All right? There'll be a and reset. And unlike Roland, I know Paul's good for it. <laughs> All right, now what? There's another milestone, or, well, it's actually a sad, sad weekend for this. There's going to be the final Bathurst for Holden. Uh, but on, on, on the plus though, if a Holden gets up, whoever, whoever that driver or team is, Jesus, that's a big one, you know, to be the last, the last Holden yeah, that wins I mean, back there. It, it, it's pretty, it's, it, the problem, pretty, it'd be pretty special. The problem like, for me is that the, unfortunately, unfortunately the sort of death of the brand in motorsport has mm. just been drawn out over yeah. three years. <laughs> True. You know, but it's just, uh, it's, it's become a, a bit of a non-story. Much as I've, you know, I've got a fantastic relationship with GM, mm -hmm. goes back a long way. And, uh, but the, the Holden story, which was so good, you know, post-war mm -hmm. and everything, and, and building, uh, b uh, building Holdens in this country up to being the number one brand very quickly and keeping it there for years. Unfortunately, the, the, the death of Holden ha is, is not a very, it's not a very good story. You know, it's mm -hmm. not something that anyone can really hold their head up with pride. Mm -hmm. um, it, great brands and great cars to look back on. It's a shame that we've sort of come drawn out yeah. in this process. So much as I respect what's gone on in the past mm. and the people who've been involved with it for the most part, not all of them, because there've been some numpties along the way, as you well know. Mm -hmm. um, but, the, but the fact is that uh, it, it is finally coming, coming to an end. And it's almost a relief. Okay, well now yeah. we can finally it's time, it's time to get finally on. part the brand. It belongs. It's got a great place in the history books. But let's get on with the current. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So last, life. so last question for you guys. Is it going to look the same next Bathurst when we come here with the Gen Three and the Camaro and the Mustang that now looks like a Mustang? Um, is is it going to have the same feel? I think it'll have a better one because don't forget it won't look like, a, like no, it won't, we, won't look like the Bathurst 12 hour with GT cars. No, when we look back at the at the heyday that everyone talks about, rose yeah. tinted spectacles, we're all guilty of it. Yeah, yeah. And look back, you know, there was Alan Moffat racing a Mustang that you couldn't buy in Australia, right? At the time, true. Yeah. So we we're going back to an era of those sort of two door, two door hero cars. On the track, they won't race anything like a GT car. Yep. They've, got, they've got so much less downforce than what we've got today, let mm -hmm. alone mm -hmm. a GT car. So the racing will be completely different. The cars actually are much closer. You know, GT cars, they look great, sound great, but they've got an awful lot of aero add-ons. Mm -hmm. These cars are much more subtle in their, in their appearance. Mm -hmm. So I think, I think it will look good. I think the cars look tremendous. Mm -hmm. they, they sound great as well. 
So I, I'm really looking forward to it. I think you'll be running so much softer cars. You know, they're going to move around so much because you haven't got to try and yeah. keep an aero platform uh, steady, which is the way the cars, as you know, have gone the last attitude. few years. Yeah. Sorry? Have a bit more attitude. Yeah, exactly. And, and I think going back to the stage where, um, Paul, you know that you know, we used to go testing at Queensland Raceway regularly and you'd have people spearing into the gravel um, during the day all the time when they're locking up, you know, locking up when you hit mm -hmm. the brakes 250. Now you can hit the brakes in these cars at 250. Even the strongest person in the world can't lock the brakes, at the front brakes at that speed. You have yep. to be going much slower. You go back mm. to having much less downforce, then it, they're going to become trickier mm -hmm. under braking. To be honest, I hope they become more difficult to drive. I agree, Pat. I've got to be honest with you, it's almost like Roland was paid to actually build this car, <laughs> the, way, <laughs> the way he just sold it. But look, I think, from my, from, you were, I think. I think you were paid, right? But look, from my perspective, is he still looking at me? <laughs> my, 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 my perspective is that it will be different next year. But yeah. different can be good as well, right? It can be bad and it can be good. So it doesn't have to be the same. It can be different and it will be different. And I think it's really going to come down to supercars and the leadership at supercars to make different better. Sell it. Yeah, sell to it. sell it. No, right? You're right. Collectively, everyone has to do it because it's what, we, right. it's what yeah. we got. So yeah. the fans, the yeah. teams, supercars, yeah. the media. Yeah. Whether you like it or not, it's what we've got to do and it's the cars we're going to have and collectively we've got to make it the best thing out there and if we don't we're all silly yep i absolutely <laughs> agree absolutely yep right. you still like me or not anymore sorry you still like me or i love you <laughs> i love you guys the beers are coming <laughs> <laughs> you'll be over there like actually over there thanks the for coming on guys <laughs> really, <laughs> really appreciate it yeah. roland Dane, peter out of there thanks dude thanks, appreciate it <laughs> <laughs> Told you it'd be interesting, didn't I? Yeah. Hey? No, but that, like I said, right from the word go. Now, that, now they're hugging each other. Got... <laughs> <laughs> it's like a love fest. <laughs> but it, like I said, it, that, and that's a good thing, it, it's stuff that we don't usually hear about, what goes on behind the scenes, and there's plenty that goes on behind those roller doors, you know, that guys like that don't mind telling you about, you know, and their thoughts, and, and they don't necessarily agree, but that's great, you know, because you want... You want both sides of the fence and debate it and hopefully go down the middle and build a better toy. Yeah. Cho choose the team you like and get behind them. Yeah. That's like. what We've run right over time. But, we? yeah, but we got, we're at a pub, all right, we're at a pub. So, to the great expert, I'm going to have a beer after this, don't worry about that. Uh, you can't come to a pub, run a show without a meat raffle. Right, so everyone, so everyone here, so where's, where's our meat raffle go? Come on, Susie. Sue Dilgar. Thank you, Susie. Oh, look at that. Get on you, Susie. <laughs> Just to prove it. We got, we got a meat platter, dude. Got a How's that? back at the house? So that, no, no, we got, we got to draw it. Okay, so everyone's put a thing. Come on, dude. You do the business, righty -o. Who we got? I'm trying to get my mum to draw it. I'll get your mum to drive. Okay. <laughs> hey, mum. Good on you, Lyle. We've got to Everyone got, there, got their tickets? Beautiful. There we go. C45. C45? Come on, Come on, come on up here. Oh. <laughs> what's, your, what's your name? Yep. There Correct match. Authenticated, Russ? They're yeah, beautiful, mate. Oh, okay. Kidding. What's your name? Tanya. Tanya. Yeah. Uh, Fort, that's your first win for the weekend. <laughs> good on you, Tanya. Big big hand for Tanya. Thank you. Very good. Good job, mate. Well done. Well, that's going to wrap us up. That's it. Mate, uh, hang on. Predictions for the weekend. You watch, what's your prediction? Who's going to win the big one? My prediction? Yep. I don't think you can go past uh, Tander and Van Gisbergen in the, in the wet conditions. Really? Yeah. I think that's uh, two, two outstanding guys in the wet. Yeah. It's going to rain all day, that, that's my prediction. Well, going on, I'd never like to pick a favourite, and no doubt they are favourite. If, if we knew it was going to be dry, I'd say you're on the money, because Shane's just ludicrous next level. Um, but with his rally experience at the moment, He's, uh, he's got his eye in. I mean, that was a phenomenal drive that he did to, to podium 
that World Rally Championship level two car, but geez, that was pretty impressive. <laughs> was pretty um, cool. Look, I mean, I'd like to see Cam Waters get up. I'd like to see him because we were just talking yeah, about was, him just then, yeah. and, and like he's been he's been knocked around a bit by Shane. It'd be good. I mean, his qualifying lap last year was sensational. It'd be good to see him get up, but you can't. I mean, if Chaz Moster rolls out that car like he did last year that thing was on fire he's got fabian with him this year so that they're pretty handy i mean they'll they'll be they'll be pretty strong as well so um i'd like to see cam waters get up i really would uh, but Chaz, i don't reckon is going to be too far away but throw in the wet weather like i said you get a random and what about that New Zealand guy that was sitting right there? Might have Greg Murphy. Imagine, imagine if Murph got up. Seriously? <laughs> the place would go into meltdown. Imagine New Zealand. Jesus. It would be all over the place. Stand away and Murph are definitely the smoky if it rains. Like, yep. in the wet round Bathurst, if you find that in-car of Richie Stanaway driving in the wet, he was yep. second and a half, two seconds a lap quicker than anyone yep. else. Couldn't agree more. He's in, the, in at the end and it's raining. That's it. All right, guys. Hey. Thank you very much for coming along. We hope you enjoyed it. And uh, you never know if it goes all right, we might do it again next year. Yeah, we should. So have a good weekend. <laughs> good job, mate.